to receive confidential prayer, email your request to prayer at swallowfieldchapel.org or send a text to 876-877-9794. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we say welcome and we invite you to complete the contact card in the link below so you can connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving in these troubled times. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. You may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account. The account number is 804-161, branch number 50575. Or you may log on to swallowfieldchapel.org and click Give to make your direct online contribution. If you're making a contribution for food care packages, please indicate so. Swallowfield Chapel faces Carmel in the Christian Brethren Football League on Saturday, July 8 at 2 p.m. at the Rockford Field. Come show your support for our Swallow football team. Meet up the young adult-led ministry of Swallowfield Chapel invites you to join us for In My Feelings, a continuation of the study of the Book of Psalms. Tomorrow at Meetup Monday at number 5 Swallowfield Road. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Start time 7 p.m. The next installment of the Love and Relationship series will be held this Friday, July 7th at 7 Swallowfield Road starting at 7 p.m. Hold on there. Mello not keep again? Yeah, man. But this week, Mello will be hosting the ladies as we discuss while you wait for that special smuddy. Oh, ho. So this is a part of the Love and Relationship series being worked on by more Arise, Meetup and Mello. Yeah, man. So guess what else? The meeting is going to be hybrid. That means in person and online. But the Afrocom number seven forget some of the real mellow niceness. Yo, I know you expect for here. This is a male only event. But guess what? This is for everybody. So come in. See, See you on, on Friday, Friday at 7, 7 p.m. PM. This is for all our teams. Crossroad Camp is back. Come and discover adventure as we build new friendships, deepen our faith in God, and grow with each other. The cost for camp is $10,000 will be held from August 2nd to the 6th, 2023. Register today and we'll see you there. Crossroad, where do we do life with our team. Join us for in-person service on Sunday, July 9, 2023 at 9 a.m. at number 9 as Dr. David Corbin shares on Remove That Curse from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Invite someone to church and bring the entire family. If you're unable to attend, though, you can tune in on our YouTube channel and worship with us. The church office will be closed on Tuesday, July 4 for a staff event. We will reopen on Wednesday, July 5th at 9 a.m. Struggling with forgiveness? Join Nats Farkason to gain a deeper understanding of forgiveness every other Wednesday between 5.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. in Room 1 at number 7 Swallowfield Road. To register, click the link below or visit our website at swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com and sign up for Understanding Forgiveness. We still need volunteers to serve in our upcoming Vacation Bible School on July 17 to 21 for children ages 6 to 12 years. We need help in registration. We need help for admin, for sports, music, Bible classes, and more. To register to serve, please call the church office or email Catherine Preston at swallowfieldchapel.org. For the links to these and other activities, visit swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com. May God bless you as we worship together.
never fails, he never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. Welcome to Swallowfield Chapel. We are so glad you could join us. My name is Shefe Bloomfield. Our speaker for today is Dr. Wayne Henry, and the title of his message is Guarding Against Weariness. Our mission at Swallowfield Chapel is to be and to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do this by helping people to connect, grow, and serve. That simply means we help people to connect to God and to the Christian community of faith, the church. We help people to grow as faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we empower people to serve wherever God has placed you in the world. Please don't forget to share this link with your family and friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Come, let's worship. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus Jesus, Jesus 
Swallow Fam. My name is Tabitha Reese, and I have been in missions from being here at Swallow. I believe Swallow and missions is important. It's us going out and reaching one person at a time. Recently, I had the opportunity to go on a walk with a group. We went to two groups. One went to Emancipation Park and one group went to Crossroads. I had the opportunity to walk with four other wonderful persons as we went down the Crossroads area. While we were walking, would you believe the rain started to fall? But we were not deterred. We continued to walk and we sought shelter under one of the bus stops. While we were there, there were two persons standing at the bus stop. And I want to just share the experience we had right there because I believe that that was a setup at the bus stop. So two of my colleagues started sharing with a young lady and there was a young man who had also sought shelter under the bus stop. And while they were praying and speaking with the young lady, I was led by the Holy Spirit to speak to the young man. I started speaking with him, asked him his name, and after which I asked him that question. I said to him, if you were to die today and you entered heaven and you saw the Lord, what would you say to him? And he looked at me and he could not answer. And just at that moment, I smiled with him and I started to share a little bit about myself, my testimony of how I became a Christian, and I was also led again by the Holy Spirit to just offer a word of prayer. So I asked him, could I pray with you? And he said, yes. And I started to pray. And one of the amazing things when you go out on the mission field for Jesus is the Holy Spirit leads and guides. The Holy Spirit who knows all knowledge is able to equip you and to help you in how you should pray. While I was praying for this young man, God revealed some things about this young man in this prayer, which I prayed with him. When I was finished praying that prayer, he looked at me in awe. He stood there looking at me as if he could not believe some of what I had prayed. I smiled with him. I rested my hand on his shoulder and I said to him, the Lord loves you, the Lord is has been protecting you. The Lord has been watching over you. A few minutes after that, the rain held up. My other members had been speaking with the lady and they were also sharing the good news with her. Although the persons did not make a commitment, I am assured that we have sown seeds in just those two encounters. And the Lord will do the rest. As that young man was walking away, I remember turning around to look at him and he turned back and he was looking at me. I knew that God had sown a seed in his heart. And so, why do we go out? Why should we evangelize? I believe one of the greatest things that we could ever do is to take our frailties, our weaknesses, and ask God for boldness to spread the good news. It is what we are about. It is everything that Swallowfield embodies to be and to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when the fear come, when the uncertainty comes that I don't know if I can do this, I want to encourage you. Yes, you can, because it's not we, it's not me doing it. It is the Lord doing it through me, through us. And one of the things my prayer is for us, that even now more than ever, our young people, adults, they just want someone to listen. They just want someone to hug if, we, if they allow us to. They just want someone to say, you know, God loves you, God cares, and to just pray with them. I think that demonstration, that simple demonstration as we share the good news, 
will make such a difference in a world that is showing so much coldness in how we relate with each other. So, take a step, trust the Lord, and let us go out. Let us make a difference. Let us partner with other churches. Let us allow the fire that we have, the power that we have been receiving through Christ to explode in such a powerful way. Jamaica needs me, Jamaica needs you, Jamaica needs us for our children and for our generations to come. Until, what good? As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace. I can only bow down and say, Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace, Lord God. We thank you for sending your Son to die for us, Lord God, while we were yet still sinners, Lord. And he showed your love for us, Lord God, and we thank you for it. Thank you for your mercy, Lord, and your grace. And in light of that, Lord, we would like to repent, Lord God. I repent, Lord, as a person. I repent on behalf of my family, Lord this church and this nation, Lord God. You see all of the bloodshed that we have done as a nation, the crimes, Lord God, the murder and theft, Lord God. You see all of the corruption, Lord God, and the wickedness, Lord God, the, the crimes against our children, Lord. We repent of it all, Lord God, and we ask that you, Lord, would turn our hearts towards you, Lord God, that you would come in and save our nation, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for every blessing, Lord God, that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. And we ask that you would give our leaders wisdom and guidance, Lord God, and that you would lead them, Lord God, as they lead us. Lord, we also ask, Lord God, 
We pray at this time for the sick and the grieving among us, Lord God. Lord, you know each and every pain, Lord God, and hurt. Lord, you know everyone that has been suffering for a long time, Lord God. And I've been crying out to you for a long time, Lord God, and you know those who have been crying for a short time, Lord God. I ask that you would reach in, Lord God, that you would heal those who need healing, Lord God, and that you would sustain them until you're ready to do so. Lord, and we also ask that you would be close to the brokenhearted, Lord God, and that you would comfort those, Lord God, who need comfort, Lord. Your word says that you set the lonely in families, Lord God, and we ask that you would do that to everyone who needs it, Lord God. Please look after the, the widows, Lord God, and the fatherless, and the orphans, Lord God, and be with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name The scripture reading is taken from Isaiah 40, reading from verse 25 to 31. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one, and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives us strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your tremendous love for us, that you've loved us and continue to love us with an everlasting love. Thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence here. We thank you for words and wisdom by your Holy Spirit. Thank you that your word goes forth and does not return to you empty, but it accomplishes all that you please and prospers in its assignment. Be glorified in this time and this place. Let no flesh glory, but we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a tremendous privilege just sharing here at Swallowfield. And I want to speak just on the topic, guarding against weariness. Guarding against weariness. We've, we've come through one of the greatest socioeconomic crises of our lifetime. Since late 2019 in some parts of the world, certainly here in Jamaica, early 2020, until May 2023, when the World Health Organization declared an end to the COVID-19 pandemic as a global health emergency. The societies are still grappling and trying to assess the toll that it's taken on our, our peoples the psychosocial stress, the emotional trauma. Pandemic aside, life itself can be stressful. Many challenges and coping and dealing with the challenges of life. In our Christian walk, there's an enemy of our souls that would want to stop you from getting to the finish line of your race. He wants to discourage you. The enemy wants us to give up and quit. The plan of the enemy is to wear us out. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, it says, He, the Antichrist, shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And so the plan of the enemy is to wear you down, to wear you out. Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The Greek word for due season is that word kairos which means a set or proper time. And the scripture says that as we sow, we shall in due season reap. If we sow to marriage and relationships, if you sow patience and understanding, if you sow forgiveness and quality time, you will reap, you will see the fruit of a, of a healthy relationship. If you sow in your ministry, if you sow prayer, fasting, Fellowship, the word of God, in due season you are going to see the fruits of strong and, and effective ministry. And we have to guard against growing weary. Because as we sow, the plan of the enemy is for us to give up so that we don't begin to see the fruits of what we've sown. We don't begin, we don't make it until due season. 
And he says, let us not be weary in well-doing, well-doing. And that Greek word for weary is ekakeo, which means to be exhausted, to be faint. It means to be weak and to fail in heart. And when I think of failing heart, I'm thinking of just having no motivation because you're just simply tired. And so we have to be careful. The dictionary defines to be weary as to be physically or mentally fatigued, to be very tired or worn out, lacking strength or energy. And brethren, we have to guard against becoming weary. Weariness can be natural just from our busy day-to-day -day routine. From, from Sometimes we overextend ourselves. We're doing many activities and we can grow tired. Sometimes in just the grieving process, the loss of loved ones, and we can find that we are weary, just, just tired because of grief. We can be dealing with trials and challenges and, and we can be dealing with discouragement natural occurrences and, and we're discouraged and before you know it we feel tired and of course weariness can come from the spiritual attack of the enemy i want to encourage us and, and, and to, to guard against that that weariness we our high performance as good as you are you know your high performance can be jeopardized because of tiredness of becoming weary you cannot sustain high performance in the presence of weariness what you're typically good at can be jeopardized if you are weary. When we're tired, we, we can exercise poor judgment, we can become short-tempered. Some marriages may be in trouble because spouses have grown weary. Some family relationships may be in jeopardy because of weariness. Some ministries may be jeopardized due to weariness. In ministry, Mark 6, verse 31, Jesus, our Lord himself, said to the disciples, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So the evening in the most effective of ministries, you have to take time to rest. Someone's job may be at risk because of weariness. Your health may be in jeopardy because of weariness. Your Christian walk may be at risk because of growing weary. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, it says, In the spring, at a time when kings go off to war, David the king sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army, but David remained in Jerusalem. Verse 2 of that says, One evening David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful. And you know the story. But can I suggest, brethren, that maybe David could have been weary. At a time when kings go off to war, and David didn't typically shy away from war. He's one who ran to the line of battle. He ran to meet Goliath, fearless. But at a time when kings would go off to war, we find David remaining and sending the men instead. Could it be that he was tired? And in the evening time, he arose from bed. Could it be that he was sleeping late, napping in the daytime? I'm just suggesting. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. It says, Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines, and he became exhausted. The King James says, David waxed faint. And Ishbi Benob, one of the Philistines' giants, said he would kill David that day. And he had a new sword, and he said, I'm going to kill David with this sword. But it was Abishai, the son of Zeruah, who came to David's rescue, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. Note, brethren, that David was a man known for his prowess in war, fearless. His name, his fame, preceded him because of his skill in battle. The many victories, they said Saul had killed his thousands, but David, his tens of thousands, and yet the Bible tells us that David was going into battle. It said once again, and sometimes that's a source of weariness, you know, when we're going from one trial to the next, one challenge to the next. It seems as if we believe God for one thing and we've come through, he's brought us out, and then there's another, another battle to fight. It said once again, the Philistines made war with Israel. David was fighting the Philistines from he was a boy. And yet, many years after, again, they are fighting. And sometimes we go through trial after trial, and it can wear us down. And David, as skilled as he was, was at jeopardy, at risk of losing his very life because of weariness. Hmm. Even your areas of strength, your areas of competence, 
can be at risk due to weariness. In 1 Kings 18, the prophet Elijah called down fire from heaven on Mount Carmel. But fast forward to those 1 Kings 19, and a threat is issued to his life. Jezebel says, if you're alive by this time tomorrow, may the gods deal with me be ever so severely. And the Bible said, the man of God, Elijah, ran for his life. And because of discouragement, because of fear, it seemed he grew weary. He wanted to give up. The Bible says he came under juniper tree and prayed that he might die. In one season, calling down fire from heaven. And in another piece, he said she sent messengers, a messenger to Elijah. Sometimes you can get some news and your strength just goes. The doctor gives you a report. The job, call, the boss calls you into the office, HR calls you in and hands you that slip of paper and your strength can go. Hmm. The Christian walk and experience is lightened to a race. Second Timothy 4, 7, the apostle Paul says, I fought the good fight, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith and now there's laid up for me, you know the story, a crown of righteousness, you know the passage. And Hebrew 12 verse 1 says, you know, brethren, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race marked out. Can I suggest sometimes the, the, the weights that we carry can wear us down to prevent us from going on in God. Some things that God has set before us. Some things that we are pursuing God. We can be weighed down by the weights of life. We can be weighed down by guilt. We can be weighed down by unforgiveness. We can be weighed down by bitterness. Different things can weigh us down and we find it difficult to go on in our Christian journey. And we find ourselves weary. The bondage and burden of sin can wear you down. Hmm. Genesis 11 verses 31 and 32 speaks of Terah, the father of Abraham. And it says, Terah took his son Abraham, his daughter-in-law Sarai, Lot and they left her of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But the Bible says in verse 31 of Genesis 11, but when they came to Haran, they settled there. And Terah lived to be 205 years and he died in Haran. The scripture says specifically that he left her of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan, but he came to a halfway point. He came short of Canaan to a place called Haran and he settled there and unfortunately he died in that place where he settled. Could it be that he was weary? Could it be that he intended to stay just a little while and the little while became a long while and the long while became the remaining time of his life? Brethren, guard against weariness. We said weariness can be natural in all that we do, the day-to-day -day activities. And I want to suggest five things in how we can guard against weariness. How do we treat with the natural act and part of life of getting tired? One is to simply get rest. Mark 6, 31, Jesus said to the disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. In our day-to-day -day lives, we have to schedule that time of just rest. On the weekends, we, are, we can't take time to rest. Some of us just go to bed at a decent time to allow that you get sufficient hours of rest. Our medical personnel tell us that a lot of our ailments can be avoided if you would have more physical rest, just to rest, to treat with stress and, and all that pressure of life, to physically rest. We said those in ministry can be very hard. Sometimes we have to take those sabbaticals, schedule the leave on your job. Do you have a problem in public sector in some in areas of the, where, where people have leave accumulated and they, and, and they used to pay people for the, un, with the leave that they didn't take. And after a while they said, we're not paying out persons for untaking leave anymore. We have to force you to take your leave because we realize the health benefit of just taking leave. Friend, let us be and use wisdom and ask God, cry out even for wisdom as we ask him to help us to rightly divide our time. Teach us to number our days aright. I call that the time management scripture, that we can manage our time, that we schedule specific time to get rest. 
two is let's take time even to just be still. Because it don't have to be just physical sleeping, and that's important. But sometimes to just be still. Jesus says, come to a quiet place. Come by yourselves to a quiet place. Come away to a quiet place and get some rest. And there's some value in just being quiet, taking time to be still. Psalm 23 says, He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Someone would suggest that some restoration will not take place until we take time to be still. Someone says the, the still waters are important because if the waters aren't still, if they are babbling and rippling, you really don't see yourself and your reflection in those waters, but it's the waters that are still that allow us to see our reflection. And sometimes it's so important to pause and reflect. Hmm. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Some revelation will come hmm. until, until we take time to be still. 1 Kings 19, as Elisha was running now for his life, and he's tired, he says, God, I want to die. Take my life now. And he's tired, and he falls asleep because of weariness. And he goes, the angel wakes him up, and strengthen, he's strengthened by the food and the drink of water and the bread of, you know, baked on the clay. And he goes on to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. And, and, and God says, I'm going to appear to you there. And he goes, and there's the fire. You know, and God is not in the fire, and there's an earthquake, and the place shook, rocks smashed. He's not there, the mighty wind, and wind so powerfully tore the rocks apart. And God is not in the wind, he's not in the earthquake, he's not in the wind, and he's not in the fire. <laughs> if I had time to preach, I'd say that there are times when God is in the earthquake. Because we think at midnight of a certain set, praising God, having been flogged severely, but they find that they have a yet praise, and they are praising God, and the place shakes. There's an earthquake, and God shows up. Hmm. There's time when he's in the wind. And another place, they are in an upper room, and there's a sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it's the spirit of the living God moving through the place. Hmm. And you know the tongues of cloven fire, tongues of fire settle upon them and he's in the fire. But to Elijah on that occasion, God was in neither, none of the three. And yet there came this still small voice. Everybody said, be still. And a lot of times you just have to take time. Because God will even fellowship in the, in the fellowship of the Spirit of God, even our hearts speaking to us. The Bible says you lay on your bed and be silent. Do not let the sun go down while you're angry. As you are silent and commune. And if your hearts don't condemn you. And the Lord will speak to you. Deep calling to deep. So there are times. Very important to take time to be still. So we have to get rest. Physical rest. We have to take time to be still. And the third thing I want to suggest. As we try to treat with weariness. Is to cast our cares on the Lord. To give every situation to God. The Bible says the battle is not ours. But it is the Lord. We have to learn that process of leverage. We leverage the strength of God. The process of exchange as we fellowship with God, as we pray, is that we cast our cares upon him. Do not be anxious about anything, but make your requests known with prayer, petition, thanksgiving. Make requests known and the peace of God will guard it. That's a process of exchange. I can cast cares upon him and he gives me an assurance and the peace. Learning to cast my cares on the Lord. Matthew 11, 28 to 29. Come unto me, the Lord says, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Hmm. He gives us rest. He gives us peace, not as the world gives. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friends, we have to learn to cast those cares. Psalm 55 and verse 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He shall never let the righteous be moved. No matter what situation that comes, the Bible says no temptation, no testing, no trial has come except what is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tested. He will not allow you to be tried beyond what you can bear. 
But with every temptation, he will provide a way out so that you can stand under it. But we have to leverage the strength and presence of Almighty God. When the news comes to you, when the discouraging news comes, turn it over to God. When they call you and HR hands you the slip, turn it over to God. When the doctor tells you the medical report, the diagnosis, and it's not good, turn it over to God. Cast every care upon God, for he will sustain you. Mm. As we have to treat with weariness, the fourth thing I want to share and to suggest is you have to have the right people around you. Because the scripture still says, Iron sharpens iron. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Proverbs 27 and verse 17. Galatians 6 verse 2 invites us. He says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, which is really the law of love, that we need each other. to be. There's sometimes that your strength can be gone. You are weary. You can be overcome, weighed down, and we need the brethren around us. <laughs> the Bible says in 1 Samuel 23 and 16, Jonathan came to David at Horish to help him find strength in God. Thank God for the Jonathans. Thank God that Paul has a Silas. In another season, he has a Barnabas. Thank God that Peter has a John. Thank God for the brethren who can bear us up. That when I have to step back, another can step in. And someone whose heart is like-minded. We need each other. We need each other, brethren. So we have to have the right people around us. We have to get physical rest. We have to take time to be still. We have to cast those cares, every burden to the Lord. For the battle is not ours. We have to have the right people around us. Finally, I want to encourage us. We have to feed on the presence of God. Hmm. And we read in Isaiah 40. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary as we do. His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even the young people shall faint and be weary and young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We just have to take time in our daily lives, in the schedule, our, our management of time. Take time to wait upon the Lord. It's good to do it early in the morning to set your day in order. But there's no time. There's no limit. There's nothing. You just spend time. Find time because your life depends on it. To wait on the Lord. 1 Kings 19 read that when Elijah was weary, he got the news based on the messenger sent by Jezebel. As he got tired and he came to the juniper tree and he sat down and he says, Lord, take my life. He, he was even weary of living, didn't want to continue anymore because of fear and discouragement. And the Bible says he fell down, he lay down and he slept. And the scripture says, all at once, verse 5, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. And he looked around and there by his head was some baked bread over hot coals, baked over hot coals, and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. That sounds like he was really weary. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and says, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. And strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. I want to encourage us. Jesus is the bread of heaven. As Elijah fed on the bread and drank of the water, he is the water of life. We have to take time to feed on the presence of God. Take time. The word of God will strengthen your soul. The word of God will bring refreshing. Sometimes you may, you may be down and just get in the word of God and thank God it's not just a mechanical reading of the word, but as the spirit of God breathes, and he, as he moves upon the word of God, it can cause even just that for your feeling to be transformed. The law of the Lord is perfect. Psalm 19 says, converting the soul, taking it from one state to another. Let's take time to be in prayer, 
to be in worship. And sometimes you may be so weary that you can't have a sing to open your mouth to sing songs. You can play and have, have spiritual songs being played. Sometimes you may have the, the word of God being played. You know, different apps, applications, the technology, you know, you can play the word of God. That does cause that to just be permeating the space you are because that can bring refreshing friends. And so I want to encourage us as we go about these day-to-day -day activities, as we go about in this very busy life, the bustle of life, the pace, the speed of life. People say, how is it June already? How is it summer already? And we just had Christmas. How is it 2023 already? And it's just the other day we're thinking, boy, COVID-2020, the time just flies. I want to encourage us that in all our goings, let us guard against the dangers of weariness, the vulnerabilities that come as we may find weary, and as we may find ourselves weary. I want to encourage us, somebody here, somebody listening to me, your relationships may be in trouble. Your marriage may be in trouble. And every head bowed, if you're where you are, just, let's just look to the Lord. And you may be even, you may be discouraged, just tired even of life. And I want to pray with you. You say, I've been trying my own thing. I've never given my life over to the Lord. I'm going to invite you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, to invite him in and to cast the burdens of where you are upon him. You may be a Christian, you may be going for some time and somehow you've been tired, you've been falling behind in your Christian walk. You've been weighed down, you've been just tired. It may have been at one trial after another. Once again, the Philistines made war with Israel. You say again and again, the same kinds of trials and you are just worn out and you want to pray for your strength in God. Come on, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die for my sins. I thank you that he's alive, that I might have life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Lord Jesus Christ, I come. I confess my sins to you. I confess things I've done and said. I confess, Lord, just my life without you, I confess unrighteousness. I ask you to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I give you my life and I will live for you as you show me how. Be glorified in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for renewing the strength Lord of your people, we thank you for times of refreshing coming from your presence to refresh us. We thank you that you are our glory and the lifter of our heads. We come against negative words spoken that would have brought discouragement. We break the power of the negative word and command it to fall to the ground in Jesus' name. And we thank you for reviving us. Revive us, Lord, again. Make your face to shine on us that we might be saved and be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join us for a song of worship, after which I'll do the benediction. Thank God for his finished work on the cross. Let's sing this song to you.
please receive the benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a tremendous day. To receive confidential prayer, email your request to prayer at swallowfieldchapel.org or send a text to 876-877-9794. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we say welcome and we invite you to complete the contact card in the link below so you can connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving in these troubled times. And here are a few convenient ways to do so. You may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account. The account number is 804-161, branch number 50575. Or you may log on to swallowfieldchapel.org and click Give to make your direct online contribution. If you're making a contribution for food care packages, please indicate so. Swallowfield Chapel faces Carmel in the Christian Brethren Football League on Saturday, July 8 at 2 p.m. at the Rockford Field. Come show your support for our Swallow football team. Meet Up, the young adult-led ministry of Swallowfield Chapel invites you to join us for In My Feelings, a continuation of the study of the Book of Psalms. Tomorrow at Meet Up Monday at number 5 Swallowfield Road. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Start time 7 p.m. The next installment of the Love and Relationship series will be held this Friday, July 7, at Sem Swallowfield Road, starting at 7 p.m. Hold on there. Mela not keep again? Yeah, man. But this week, Mela will be hosting the ladies, as we discuss, while you wait for that special smuddy. Oh, ho. So this is a part of the Love and Relationship series being worked on by more Arise, Meetup, and Mellow. Yeah, man. So guess what else? The meeting is going to be hybrid. That means uh, in person and online. But you have to come number seven for get some of the real Mellow niceness. Yo, I know you expect for here, this is a male-only event. But guess what? This is for everybody. So come in. See, See you on, on Friday, Friday at 7, 7 p.m. PM. This is for all our teams. Crossroad Camp is back. Come and discover adventure as we build new friendships, deepen our faith in God, and grow with each other. The cost for camp is $10,000. It will be held from August 2nd to the 6th, 2023. Register today and we'll see you there. Crossroad, where do we do life with our team. Join us for in-person service on Sunday, July 9, 2023 at 9 a.m. at number 9 as Dr. David Corbin shares on Remove That Curse from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Invite someone to church and bring the entire family. If you're unable to attend, though, you can tune in on our YouTube channel and worship with us. The church office will be closed on Tuesday, July 4 for a staff event. We will reopen on Wednesday, July 5th at 9 a.m. Struggling with forgiveness? Join Nats Farkason to gain a deeper understanding of forgiveness every other Wednesday between 5.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. in Room 1 at Number 7 Swallowfield Road. To register, click the link below or visit our website at swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com and sign up for Understanding Forgiveness. We still need volunteers to serve in our upcoming Vacation Bible School on July 17 to 21 for children ages 6 to 12 years. We need help in registration. We need help for admin, for sports, music, Bible classes, and more. To register to serve, please call the church office or email Catherine Preston at swallowfieldchapel.org. For the links to these and other activities, visit swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com. May God bless you as we worship together.